Okay, here are two more parametric problems. Um, number one, I'm gonna get you part way through some of these and then your job will be to finish them off and um, enter your answers. So first one, a sixth grader throws a ball straight up with an initial velocity of 40 feet per second and releases the ball at a height of five feet. So here's this and he throws it, throws it up and it says straight up and releases the ball at a height of five. So it throws it up, releases at five feet and just goes straight up and straight down. Hmm. Can you figure out which one of those two components is going to be zero or going to have a value? Yeah, it's going to be the X value. The X value shouldn't travel left or right. I mean, maybe the wind blows it a little bit, but um, shouldn't travel left or right. So um, let's do this. Find a set of parametric equations that describes the position of the ball as a function of time. My first one, X equals, well, my initial velocity is 40 feet per second times the cosine of the angle. Um, cosine of 90 times my time uh, times t and let's think about it for here for a second there's 90 the ordered pair here is uh, 0 comma 1 sine is y cosine is the x value the x value is 0 cosine of 90 is 0 so it's 40 times 0 times t do you know what this parametric equation is if this is 0 x equals zero, that ball goes straight up and straight down. There really isn't a horizontal component on this one. Uh, this one, y equals negative one half of g. This is in feet per second again, so this is gravitational constant, is negative 16 uh, t squared, uh, plus my initial velocity. My initial velocity is 40 um, times the sine of 90. Um, sine is the y value, so sine of 90, which is gonna be one times t plus the start height. Um, and the start height on this one, my h value is it launches at five. Again, we can clean this up, negative 16 t squared plus uh, 40 t, the sine of 90 is one. So if there's a one there, that can go away, plus five. And I got two parametric equations that will model the path of this ball. How long is the ball in the air? Well, that's when my y value is zero. Negative 16 t squared plus 40t plus 5. You're either going to use a quadratic formula or you're going to go into your poly root finder or use a, a quadratic formula app, whatever you want to do. And you're going to get two t values. You'll get one negative and you'll get one positive. How long it's in the air is the positive value there. So you'll need to go in and find that. You can press pause and go do that now and then enter your answer. When is the ball at its maximum height? Well, the ball is at its maximum height through this equation, negative b over 2a, and it's an up and down version of it, so I wanna use this equation, this up and down version of it. So there's my x is equal to zero. There's my other parametric equation right there. Uh, well, on this one, it's negative b, which is my 40, negative 40 over two times my a value, which is negative 16. And the answer for that is when it's at its maximum height you'll find an answer there, okay? And you'll enter that. What is the maximum height? Well, the maximum height, and you can press pause and find this first, but the maximum height is the value that you would get if you took that value and you plugged it in for the t's. So you'll need to do that and find out um, what the maximum height is. Um, you'll find out a height value and figure out, I don't know, figure out how high it goes. And the last one, how far does the ball travel left and right? And I think we've already answered that in the video. So you should be able to do this problem right there um, without, without too, much of a, out too much of an issue. So go to work and then uh, press pause and we'll do the second one. Okay, the second one, I gotta go back up here and make sure, yep, 9.8, all right. The second one is a tennis ball. And I'm gonna use the same set of equations and get you part way there the same way I just did. So it says, a tennis ball struck with an initial speed of 40 meters per second. Meters per second is a different gravitational constant. At an angle of 45 degrees of the horizontal, the ball's hit from a top of a 300 meter building. Holy cow, so there's this building up here, this little dude on top of the building, hits this ball up at 45 degrees and it's gonna travel like that. Oh my goodness, somebody at the top of a tower and just playing around hitting a tennis ball. Uh, wind resistance would really probably play a, play a factor in this one, but we're not gonna worry about that. 
Find a set of parametric equations that describes the position of the ball at a function of time. So x is equal to initial velocity, 40 meters per second, times the cosine of the angle, the cosine of 45, which we know is radical 2 over 2. We can leave it there. Cosine of 45 um, times time. The other one is y equals y equals the gravitational constant in meters per second. How hard does gravity pull things down in meters per second is 9.8. So negative 1 half times 9.8 is negative 4.9. t squared plus initial velocity, 40 meters per second times the sine of the angle, which is still 45, t plus the start height. This time the start height is 300. It's 300. Okay, and by the way, you can plug these in and you can trace these values on your calculator to see if you are right when you enter your answers. So a good thing to do right now would be to put this on your graphing calculator and try to get your window to fit. You could have an X value of zero and then maybe, I don't know, four or five hundred for your window value. Um, and you could you maybe set it up like this. Start your X value at zero and maybe go out 500 and start your y value at zero and you could take your y value up so that would be like your x min and your y min and then this would be like your x max at about 500 assuming that ball will will go down there and then my y max i don't know it starts 300 how high would it go after that i don't i don't think it's going to go any any higher than 500 and you could set your calculator window up and do a really good job of modeling this on your calculator but we're going to do it from more of an algebraic standpoint for this part. So here we go. How long is the ball in the air? Well, the ball is in the air. When the y value hits zero, the ball ceases to be in the air. Plus 40 sine of 45. T plus 300. Use the quadratic formula. Use your app on your, on your calculator. Uh, I don't care. You're going to find a T value. There will be two answers. One's negative, one's positive. The positive value is how long that ball was in the air until it hit the ground. You go in and find it. When is the ball at its maximum height? Well, negative b over 2a. Negative b, oh, my b value is here, 40. Sine of 45 times my t value. Oh, sine, I don't need it. I don't need the t. The negative b all over 2 times the a value, which is negative 4.9 negative b over 2a. And you'll find a value out for that. Okay, That ball was hit off the top. That is when it hits the max height. It's the max height at that time. What is the max height? The max height is what you would get if you plug that t value, whatever you get for that value, into that y equation. Whatever you get there, you plug it in to that y equation. The y equation is how high. You plug it in to those two spots and you figure out, well, uh, it was uh, at the max height at this time and here's the maximum height it, it would, have, would have done. So you plug that in. How far does the ball travel horizontally? So how far does it go left and right? Well, I wonder how long that trip took. Hmm. Well, how long is the ball in the air? Whatever you've got for an answer there, that is the time value for how long it took. If you take that time value and you plug it into this equation right here for the time, so you're going to take uh, your x values, horizontal distance. You're going to take your initial velocity, which is 40, times the cosine of 45, times your time value that you found out for how long the ball is in the air. That time value, that'll go in right there and that'll tell you how far horizontally it went. And last but not least, letter F. Using a graphing utility, simultaneously graph the equations in A. So you graph those with the parametric setting. And you can trace all these times and you can make sure that your answers are correct. Okay? Good luck doing those.